Quit bringing that slimy creep for holding on the obscene phone calls. Go over there and sit down, bad mouth. I'll go f <laughs> copper. I'm going to lock you up and throw away the key, boy. You can take that key and tie it to your <laughs> Sherlock. <laughs> Why don't you go take a <laughs> get a rolling donut? <laughs> now look, boy, don't honk me off. Well, don't <laughs> me off. Well, the department's gonna see to it you don't call no more women and use words like <laughs> and <laughs> and <laughs> and I can't even read this one. That's <laughs> flat foot. <laughs> I suppose you never did it. Well, uh... You bet your sweet <laughs> to have you. Now, just a minute. <laughs> What's your name, bad mouth? My name is George... <laughs> did you say... <laughs> yeah, I said... <laughs> spelled... T. Yeah, spelled... T. Just like it sounds. <laughs> I'd like to take that badge and pin it to your tiny little... That'll be the day, boy, when you take my badge and pin it to my tiny little... Hello? Yeah, Commissioner. Is that the Commissioner? Him, too. You sit down there, boy, and keep your bad mouth shut. Commissioner, we're holding a boy here on obscene phone calls. Yeah, his name is <laughs> T. Well, now you got me there. You've been carrying on, so I haven't had a chance to ask him. I'll ask him right now. Boy, what do you do for a living? I'm professor of English literature at Slippery Stone University, specializing in 15th century culture appreciation. You <laughs> flatfoot. <laughs> Ajax Airlines. Ajax Airlines. That's right, sir. The proud bird with a cast iron tail. <laughs> oh, I stole the commercial, Charlie Brown. I just want to know what time is your 11.06 leave for San Antonio. It leaves at 11.06. Okay. We have tourists in first class. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> in first class, you get an extra vegetable. Huh? You get an extra vegetable in first class. Okay, I'll take an onion. <laughs> We're, we're gonna have some turbulence. No, nope. I'll stick with the onions. <laughs> Do you serve Chinese food? Yes, we serve everybody food. Do you serve <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I'm gonna forget you said that. You're one, ain't you? <laughs> Sir, let's get back to the flight now. This is a non-stop flight, you know. How about your hostesses? Oh, they're beautiful. Are they topless? <laughs> no, sir, regulations. They must wear hats. <laughs> do they mess around? <laughs> look, look, do you want to go on this flight or don't you? What's your movie? Uh, no movie on this flight. No movie? No, sir, a rodeo. <laughs> That's fantastic. I bet you clean up on that, huh? <laughs> uh, no, sir. The stewardesses take care of that. <laughs> Are they topless? Sounds like you have a one-track mind. Sounds like you never saw a topless horse. <laughs> <laughs> sir, please, look, I'm very busy. And I'm Mr. Nobody, is that it? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Well, just remember, I'm a VIQ. P. Huh? P. P. You're a VIP. Well, then treat me like when you communist. <laughs> Oh, sir, sir. Hey, what's uh, Tony I like this time of year anyway? Oh, it's beautiful. Is this going to be a round trip? No way. I'm just going to fly down there and turn around and fly right back. Oh, <laughs> now we're getting nowhere. Well, thanks to me. Amen. Uh, boy, did I eat that onion already? <laughs> Let me check this sucker out now. She leaves at 747. Yeah, uh, no, no. The plane is a 747. It leaves at 1106. 
Dance floor. Okay. Well, goodbye. <laughs> Hold it. Uh, Just a minute there. Sir, I'm very busy. Well, how about me? I'm running around like a chicken with my legs cut off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Operator, would you chase this call and tell me where I am? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, this is Ajax Airlines. Cancel the call, operator. <laughs> this is Ajax Airlines. Ajax huh? Airlines. Remember, it costs no more to relax in the heavenly skies of Ajax. Well, now we're getting nowhere. Thanks to you. Amen. Sir, you're holding up customers. I'm holding up customers. You got a lot of nerve, so it charges your price. <laughs> 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 Sir! I'm very busy. I've got two calls to make, five on hold, and seven lines blinking. And the portraits <laughs> in the portraits. <laughs> well, that does it. Well, it's about time. It's about time. Time? Oh, my gosh, time. What time does 1106 leave for San Antonio? In exactly three minutes. Hold that plane. I can't do that. You better hold that plane. Look, sir, don't threaten me. I'm not threatening you. I'm just telling you. You better hold that plane. Why should we hold the plane for you? Because I'm a pilot. <laughs> Then I'm sorry, Floyd. <laughs> Don't go getting all sentimental now, Floyd. Just go curl up somewhere. <laughs> Boy, I couldn't live like that. That Floyd's a good old snake, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he goes, I'm gonna make a wallet out of him. You don't do what? I'm gonna make a wallet out of him. That's what I thought you'd say. <laughs> Dirty side winding, no account claim jumping. You struck it rich, didn't you? No. You hit the mother load. No. You found some gold dust. No. You're holding out on me. No. That's the reason you need the wallet. No, I ain't either. I ain't found no dust. I ain't, I swear. Well, just look down the barrel of old Betsy here and tell me that. Put that down. We ain't had no boats in over 20 years. <laughs> Sorry. I'm your partner. I wouldn't cross you. You better not. I hope to spit in your mess kit. <laughs> oh, sorry, Floyd. <laughs> Boy, I couldn't live like that. <laughs> Boy, you better never steal from me, see? <laughs> you better never get into my bag. No. You know what it says in the Bible? What does it say? Thou shalt not steal. Yeah, I ain't gonna steal. By the way, where is the Bible? You know where the Bible is as well as I do. Where? We smoked it. Oh. <laughs> Boy, this coffee sure is getting cold. Yeah. Well, the fire went out. When? Monday. This week? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ray, what's old Floyd doing over there? Oh, I don't pay him no mind. He was eating a gopher. <laughs> Boy, I couldn't live like that. <laughs> There goes that farming again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other one will be starting in soon. No, he won't either. How's that? Floyd ate him. <laughs> well, I couldn't live like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Zeke, yeah, yeah. you're getting powerful, gamey. <laughs> How long has it been since you've been down the creek and took yourself a good bath? You're getting to sound like old Farley. He was a fiend for that. Well, enough for him to go out and take two, three baths a year. Yeah, old Farley, huh? Yeah. Almost forgot Farley. He is. <laughs> I told him not to tease Floyd when he was eating. <laughs> We're gonna have to bury him. Yeah, we keep putting it off. Uh, ever occur to you, might be old Farley who's getting gamey? Boy, you'll do anything to get out of that bath, won't you? <laughs> You, Reef, I was just sitting there thinking. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, 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 
<laughs> How long has it been since since we've seen a woman? <laughs> I mean, a real live, genuine woman. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, for sake. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. Got to be 25 years. That long? <laughs> yeah, down in Central City at the picture show. Betty Grable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this, this city slicker, he is out there chasing her. Remember that? <laughs> boy, I bet she had perfume all over her, don't you suppose? Boy, <laughs> he sure acted that way, didn't oh, he? Oh, boy, he sure made a fool of himself, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Boy, boy I, I couldn't live like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Jeffrey? Yes, Sir Basil? Would you care for some sherry? Oh, yes, thank you so much. <laughs> you know, Sir Jeffrey, mm -hmm. could I have a hot to hot with you? You'd like to talk? Yes, actually. <laughs> Good show. Not before the sherry, though. Oh, good heavens, no. Cheers, then. Over the lips and past the gums. Look out, abdomen. Here she comes. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Sir Geoffrey. Yes. Well... Yes? Yes. Well? Dear me, this is awfully cumbersome. Oh, really? What, Sir Basil? Well, Sir Geoffrey... I wanted to talk to you about... Yes, yes, go ahead. Yes. I wanted to talk to you about Cecily. Your wife? <laughs> Precisely. Nothing's happened to her, I hope. Well... You're not having a tiff, are you? <laughs> oh, blast it all, Sir Geoffrey. Are you seeing Cecily? Me? <laughs> seeing Cecily? Precisely. Your wife? Come now, Sir Geoffrey. Let's get right down to the Kyber rifles here. <laughs> Are you having an affair with my Cecily? Good heavens, Sir Basil, my word. Whatever on earth would possess you to make such an outrageous statement? I have photos of the entire bloody affair. <laughs> my word, that is rather sticky wicked, isn't it? Then you admit it. Sir Basil, I know this is an awfully clumsy time to change the subject, but are those new tweeds? Yes, actually. <laughs> Do you like them? Positively crackers about them. <laughs> How awfully decent of you to notice. They're bull patches. They're antelope suede, aren't they? Unborn, yes. yes. <laughs> By the way, Sir Basil. Yes? Wasn't last night your night for tiddlywinks at the club? <laughs> you know that very well, Sir Geoffrey. Strange. I stopped by the club last night. Eh? You weren't there. <laughs> Not at all? No. And coincidentally, neither was Olivia at home. Olivia? Your wife? Not at home? Not at my home. Not at all? Indeed not. Good heavens. And furthermore, Sir Basil. Uh, excuse me, Sir Geoffrey. Would you care for another dash of sherry? Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Here we go, then. Over the lips and past the gums. Look out. Yes? Oh, my dear. I'm, I'm afraid I've forgotten how that one goes. <laughs> no matter. Bottoms up and let's let it go at that. Good show. Sir Geoffrey. Mm. Do I smell Tondaleo? Tondaleo? Cecily's perfume. Cecily's perfume? On me? You're positively reeking of it. Come, come, Sir Basil. Aren't we making this whole bloody thing into more than it is, actually? I mean, really? We are acting rather childish. After all, we are Shashire educated, you know. Alpha, Omega. Foxes of Hero. Shashire, Shashire. Clean to the marrow. Beastly good. Oh! Sir Basil, I remember. Yes? Abdomen, here she comes. By Jove, I think you've got it. Uh, oh, and by the way, Sir Basil. Yes? Have you made plans for the hunt? The weekend affair at Essex. Precisely. Cecily and I discussed it this morning. Oh, did she mention me? <laughs> Come to think of it, I think she did. Oh, how awfully decent of her. Are you planning to bring Olivia? Olivia? <laughs> yes, your wife. 
Oh, that, Olivia. Yes. Well, I hadn't planned on it, but since you're going to bring the Saturday, perhaps I shall. Good job. It's settled then. We'll make it a foursome. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Ajax Travel Bureau? Yes, it is. Wait, feet come in, young man. Thank you. What can I do for you? I'd like to go to the South Sea Island. Ah, what a coincidence. Just this morning, I sent a lovely young couple down to Bogota. Yeah, no, Bogota's in Colombia. You sure? <laughs> I'm positive. Well, I'll be hearing from them. <laughs> I thought it was in Tahiti. No. no, no. You're married, are you? Yes, I am. Uh, can I see a picture of your wife? There she is. That's her. That's her. <clears throat> You're to be pitied, young man. That's an ugly woman. <laughs> you ought to send her to Canada. She'd look good up there. Canada? Most country. She'd fit right in. <laughs> Are you married? No, I'm a widower. Oh, too bad. Ah, yes. Poor little thing. She fell off the Empire State Building. Three somersaults and a splat. Oh. <laughs> it's tragic. Were you with her when she fell? No one's ever been able to prove it. <laughs> ah, I've got an opening to Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. No, I don't think so. Ah, you like that? Get your shirts done for six cents. <laughs> no, no, I think if we went to the Orient, we'd rather go to Tokyo. All right, Tokyo, all right, thanks. That's where Emperor Hiroshima lives, I believe. Is that right? I believe so. If he's still living, can't tell about those birds always committing Harry Carey. Yeah. Now, not like jujitsu. Stay away from it. It's no good for you. <laughs> How's that look to you? Fine. It used to be warped. <laughs> uh, maybe you want to go to Borneo. Borneo. Ah, yes. Go down there and meet the wild man of Borneo. Oh, there's a wild man. Then. You betcha, I hope to tell you. Have you ever seen him? No, of course, I've never even seen Bo Diddley. <laughs> <laughs> well, my wife and I went to Hawaii last yeah, year. Yeah, I saw your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Suppose you went over there to see Don Ha. Ho. Who? Ho. Not Ha. No. Oh. Ho. That's all. <laughs> I got a picture of Hawaii here. It's in black and white. Oh, of course, it's taken during October. <laughs> and it's moving. I'll help to tell you, it's an earthquake. You see the lava? Lava. No, thank you. I'll have a martini if you got one. <laughs> no, I don't drink. Oh, a junkie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm no junkie. The strongest thing I put in my body is an aspirin. Uh, an upper freak. <laughs> uh, don't mind if I drink? No, go right ahead. Uh, thank you very much. I got some right here in my cane. Hey, uh, God, wait, Daniel, I can't get it open. What do you know about Pango Pango? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> pango Pango. Oh, stay away from there, stay away from there, whatever you do. Why is that? Eleven years ago, I came this close to being barbecued by the savages. Yet nightmares think about it to this day. Came rushing at me, carrying spears. They were all carrying spears? Not all of them. Some carrying knives and forks. <laughs> Some carrying salt and pepper. Yeah. One was carrying Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Just about when they were going to run me through. Yes? I jumped up and did my impersonation of Amos and Andy. Oh, they like that. Ain't my partner, though. <laughs> Poor devil. Made him into Booyah Bays. Booyah Bays? I didn't want it that way. He was a frog. <laughs> well, when I first came in, you mentioned Tahiti. Garden spot of the South Seas. I think my wife and I would like to go there. Airlines? Ah, Tahiti. Ajax Travel Bureau here. Beautiful moon. Book two to Bogota. <laughs> <laughs> Mon Junior Schultz, you're a man of the cloth. I'm hip. <laughs> now, the reason the Internal Revenue Service has called you in here is to see if you qualify for tax-free status. Is that right? Yes. This isn't a, a bust. No. <laughs> Not a frame. Not a frame, no. Uh, shoot. Just gonna check you out now. You call this new religion of yours Frederickism? That's right, Frederickism, right on the money. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of money, may I check your books? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you got me. I got you there, huh? Everything's right up there. Oh, I see. All right, well, now, how do you join this new religion? What do you have to do? Very simple. Just give 40% of everything you got. <laughs> 40%? Other religions have a top of 10%. Let them eat cake. <laughs> to join the Church of Frederick, you gotta give 40%. Yeah, well, who is this Frederick? That's me. <laughs> Freddie. <laughs> Freddie Schultz. Freddie Schultz. <laughs> My mother's the Virgin Alice. <laughs> Religion. 
Do you believe in drinking? Absolutely not. You give them one, they want two. You give them two, they want four. Yes. Give them four, they want eight. Eight. Then 17. Uh-huh. Then you got a bunch of winos. Yeah. You know what that is? No, what is that? That's 40% of a bunch, bunch of winos. Bunch of winos, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing in it. No. Well, do you take vows? Once in a while, after a red-hot sermon, they scream and clap for more. I take a couple. No, 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 no. That's vow. I mean vow, vow. You mean whoopee, whoopee? No. <laughs> You know, in other religions, they have they have fundraising events like uh, carnivals and bingos. Do you have anything like that in Frederickism? Only more progressive. Like what? Jacks are better to open. <laughs> you don't have jacks, you go to Queens. I call that progressive. I'm struck by this symbol on your gorgeous robe. You to, like that? To everybody, it probably looks like a, the number eight, but to me, I get a deep theological reading out of that. Oh? Yes. <laughs> The continuous line represents the never-ending cycle of love. Wait a minute, what? <laughs> the continuous line represents the never-ending cycle of love. It's beautiful. Oh, well, when we started out, we just had that. Just use, <laughs> just use the top hat. That was a zero. Yeah. <laughs> then we went to this. Yes, well, what is that? Well, that, that's the never-ending cycle of love. <laughs> Do you believe in miracles? What do you mean, miracles? Well, let's say Wilt Chamberlain making two foul shots in a row. No, no, no. no, no. I'm religious, I'm not nuts. <laughs> do you believe in reincarnation? There's no need. If you're in the Church of Frederickism and follow the commandments, you never die. If you don't die, you don't have to get reincarnated. Well, now, wait a minute. Are you telling me that no one in your religion has ever died? I never said that. <laughs> Wilhelm died. Wilhelm died? But he broke a commandment. Which one? The sixth one. Oh. Thou shalt not walk in front of a toy. <laughs> How many commandments do you have? 26. <laughs> Can't hardly move without getting busted. Yeah. <laughs> really keeps them on their toes. It man. really does, huh? They run those rosary beads through their fingers so fast smoke comes off of yeah. them. <laughs> well, now, how about sacraments? Do you have sacraments? Gee, I don't know. I check. <laughs> I got some peppermints. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, how about supernatural powers? Do you believe in supernatural powers? If you don't believe in supernatural powers, you'll have bad luck. Oh, yes. But so, in other words, you're, like, afraid of black cats and... Are you kidding me? Huh? No way. No we way? tried our best to sign up Sammy Davis. <laughs> <laughs> we still got him under option. Do you? <laughs> if the Jews ever slow up, we'll move in. <laughs> Well, one final question, my Junior Schultz. I have to have this for my records. Just a, just a rough estimate. How much money do you have in your treasury? How much? A rough estimate. A rough estimate. Just off the top of my head. Just a guess. Twenty-six million four hundred and twenty-one dollars and nineteen cents. <laughs> wow! Wow! No, I told you, whoopee, whoopee. <laughs> Could you tell me where I am? You're in Hollywood, California. <whistles> well, there's a stroke of luck. <laughs> I blacked out over Honolulu. <laughs> what, were you flying over Honolulu? No, it's an orbit. I'm an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever done that before? Blacked out, I mean? Yeah, I blacked out once back home in the, in the tunnel of love. <laughs> See, that must have been embarrassing. No, I was alone. <laughs> I was, I was doing a test run. Well, here you are in Hollywood, California. Yeah, boy, ain't that weird? Well, you know, sure you... this ain't the moon? You know, they're holding me responsible for that rocket. You ain't seen it, have you? No, I haven't seen it. <laughs> you know, you really ought to call Cape Kennedy. They must be worried sick about you. I ain't got anything to do with Cape Kennedy. Well, that's where all the government astronauts are. Yeah, them big suckers, they didn't even fight me to their party. This is, a, I'm a private astronaut. 
You... Everybody in our hometown getting chipped in and we built that spaceship. Now, wait a minute. You mean everybody in your hometown chipped in and built a rocket? All the brains in our community got together. Oh, a lot of brilliant scientists, college graduates, PhDs. Oh, yeah, brilliant people, no college people. No college people. <laughs> the only adults in our hometown that was past the third grade was uh, one. Just one, huh? Yeah. How far did he go? All the way. All the way. <laughs> yeah. Right up to the sixth grade. <laughs> what does he do? He's our high school teacher. <laughs> yeah, he's a heck of a guy. What? Roberto Ramon de la Warren. Is that right? <laughs> and what's the name of your high school? The same thing. <laughs> yeah? Uh, I've got to find that rocket. You'd know it if you've seen it. The name's right on there. Emma Jean the Third. Emma Jean the Third. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what happened to the other Emma Jeans? They didn't make it. They didn't make it, huh? I don't know what it was. I think the dynamite got wet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell me, who were the guys who donated all these parts to make this rocket? Two guys chipped in and gave us all the materials. Two guys. A dentist and an Italian. I see. <laughs> What was the rocket made of? Porcelain and concrete. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. Now, why, why would you go in a rocket alone? I mean, in Cape Kennedy, they sent two, three guys to the moon. I know it. I was Arthur Highback was going to go, but at the last minute, his wife wouldn't let him. <laughs> Just wouldn't let him, huh? So he didn't have the plowing done. <laughs> I didn't want him to go anyway. The only reason I invited him is he's got the compass. Oh. <laughs> well, I certainly hope you got the compass. No, well, his wife wouldn't let me have that either. <laughs> his wife? Big Alice. Big Alice. Yeah. She's a big girl. Well, a paper boy rides through her legs on his bike. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty... <laughs> That's pretty big. <laughs> Ain't no big deal. Everybody in town does it. <laughs> Hey, do you have any idea where the moon is from here? It's right up there. Can't you see it? I overshot that sucker. <laughs> we used too much dynamite. That That's could've... not up there very far at all. No, not at all. That could have very well happened. Well, I don't know what I can tell you, sir. Well, I... I'm sure gonna get ribbed when I go back without that rocket. You know, you know what you could do? You know what you could do? <laughs> You could tell them that this is the moon. They've never seen Hollywood, California. Well, you could go over to the rock quarry and get some quartz and bring it back. No, if I was gonna lie, I wouldn't want to lay it on that deck. <laughs> I might take a couple pints back. <laughs> well, look, I've got some picture postcards of, like, Grauman's Chinese Theater. You got Chinese people out here? We have a whole section, Chinatown. Ain't nobody in our neck woods ever seen any Chinese people. Is that right? Mary Wan. You could get a camera. Hey, is that Fu Manchu? Is he a real Chinaman? Yeah. <laughs> you could get a camera and go down to Chinatown and take lots of pictures and tell them they were moon people. My problems are over. I'll do it. You think they'd go for that? I'll, I'll, it'd be my word against theirs. Right. I go to church with them every Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly wouldn't come out here to check on you. They couldn't. They couldn't. We ain't got no rocket. Hi, sports fans. Welcome to Ace Grobney Talks with the Superstars. Tonight's guest, the incredible fullback of the Steubenville studs, Bruiser LaRue. Hi, Ace. <laughs> I love your cufflinks. <laughs> Bruiser, you were sensational last night. Oh, Ace, that's so sweet of you to say that. <laughs> you rushed 253 yards, caught four touchdown passes, and picked up three fumbles. And a sailor. <laughs> <laughs> a sailor? A mini. <laughs> a seaman. <laughs> Yo, ho, blow the night <laughs> What do you enjoy most about football? Piling on, Ace. <laughs> oh, I love it. Bodies here, bodies there, bodies, bodies everywhere. <laughs> oh. Bruiser, football's dangerous. Can you think of one game that was actually fun? Oh, I'll never forget it. We were playing an exhibition game in Argentina. <laughs> it was against the Gay Caballeros. <laughs> 
The gay caballeros? That's right. Did you score? <laughs> Oh, a great big silly you. <laughs> Did I score? I ran myself right. <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, Bruiser, how about running down your career for us? How did it all begin? Well, Ace, I started out playing kick the can in my mother's high heels. Yes. <laughs> and then, of course, we went into grade school football, which was touch football. Touch? Which I dearly loved. <laughs> oh, if I knew then what I knew now. <laughs> Yes, yes. And then we moved on to junior high. We used to call it junior varsity, which was really a blast because we had all the cheers and everything. Ah, oh, yes, the cheers. Can you remember some of those old high school cheers, Bruiser? Oh, you bet. Uh, Ace, I'd be happy to do a couple for you. <laughs> California oranges, Tectus cactus. We play East High just for practice. <laughs> and remember this one? Re, 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 hit him on the knee. Rass, rass, rass. Hit him on the other knee. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to be a football hero to get along with the beautiful girls. <laughs> well, different strokes for different folks. <laughs> You didn't have a girl? Well, I didn't, Ace. The team did. Oh. The team? Gene. Gene. Gene the machine. <laughs> oh, that was your nickname. That was one of them. Yeah. She had all kind of nicknames. Yeah. Ten to one, seven up, any, any over, Ollie, ollie, ollie oxen free, and Gene for joy. <laughs> oh, the coach always used to say, she's going to ruin this football team. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, out of all the games you've played, Bruiser... <laughs> out of all the games you've played, Bruiser, can you come up with what you consider your greatest play? Oh, I certainly can. You know, all of us are prima donnas, Ace. And I remember my one play that I think was just fantastic, where I will never forget, we're playing against the Bradford Beavers. The Bradford Beavers. Right. And I took up a, a handoff from my quarterback, uh, Sid Talmadge. Yes. And I went racing around left hand, and all at once, this huge beaver was staring me right in the face. A Bradford beaver. Yes, ugly. Oh. And I stopped and I said, hi. Excuse me, are you a Libra? <laughs> Big silly dummy was trying to think it over and I just scooted around him and tippy-toed in for a touchdown. <laughs> Another great moment in sports. This is KWFM-FM and KWFM-FM-FM. Stay tuned now for the Radio Ministry of the Air, starring Friar Shuck. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Friar Shuck Radio Ministry of the Air. <laughs> this evening, just before airtime, I had the divine joy of talking with the Almighty. It was in my garage. <laughs> Everything was just perfect. I got right straight through to him, and I got talking about some real heavy subjects. He got to telling me that there were those of you out there with afflictions and terrible troubles. He said there's a lady out there tonight somewhere that believes that her daughter's in trouble. Now, I don't know if it's you. Do you think your daughter's in trouble? Don't despair. The Almighty told me that it could be taken care of. Simply send a hundred dollars. <laughs> now, if you don't have a hundred dollars, hawk something. <laughs> Borrow it. Get it. And send it to Fire Shuck. Get it on. And now it's the time of the Fire Shuck Radio Ministry there to talk to someone inside of our studio. I have with me a, a pathetic man. <laughs> he has an affliction that's almost indescribable. <laughs> Could we have your name, sir? My name is Edward Stokes, Reverend. May I tell them what's wrong with you, Mr. Stokes? Okay, I 
tried to keep it a now secret. Now hold yourself together, Mr. Stokes. The Almighty is on your side. Praise the Lord. Mr. Stokes, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, has never been able to sweat. All of his natural life has never been able to sweat. I can't sweat. Not one brilliant little droplet of perspiration has ever gone off his elbows and fallen into the dry sands of the hot lands that he lives in. Oh. Just imagine when he's in heat. I mean terrible heat, 112. You and I, we sweat. I can't sweat. Inside our bodies are gorgeous little tiny glands <laughs> that turn loose the joyous fluid of God's cooling system. <laughs> but not so with Mr. Stokes. Imagine the pain and anguish that he's gone through. You don't know, Friar. Inside his body is an inferno. <laughs> Every little dimple on the outside of his Christian skin is screaming for comfort. <laughs> for 17 years, he played left field for the Cincinnati Red Sox. That's right, folks. He had a batting average of seven. <laughs> We're going to try and fix that, Mr. Stokes. Oh. And I want you to try and remain calm. Praise the Lord. I want to hold you on the forehead. Oh. I want all of you to take a hold of your, your prayer claws and your radios. <laughs> now let's see if we can't contact the Almighty and do a miracle. Miracles are beautiful. Mr. Stokes, just let it all hang out. <laughs> Uh, just just think up toward heaven, Mr. Stokes. Uh, up there's the Almighty. I can't sweat. Just wanting you to sweat. The Almighty doesn't want you to cook in your own epidermis. <laughs> Almighty, in all your divine majesty, oh. in all your understanding warmth, oh. Can you see to it that this man can enjoy the wet sweat and comfort that's known to all of us? Imagine right now, fat people all over the world doing the twist and laughing it up. They're comfortable because they're leaving mud puddles all over the floor. <laughs> Mr. Stokes can't even waltz. <laughs> Mr. Stokes, I don't want to. I don't want to. I think. I don't want to bring. I think. Is, are those little drops of sweat? I'm sweating. Oh, let me. Let me I'm sweating. Let me check under your arm. Oh, oh you're sweating. I'm sweating. The Almighty's good, isn't he, Mr. Oh, Stokes? Praise the Lord. The Almighty's good. I'm sweating. Oh, oh. Mr. Stokes. Briar Shuck. Oh. That'll be $5,000. <laughs> <laughs>